I'm back. I sure am, I'm back. And I'm back to show you something a bit special, as they used to say on one of the TV programmes. What have we got here? Well, some of you might have seen the pictures of what this is, and some of you might not. But one thing I can tell you, you're not going to see many of these kicking around. And uh, what I would say about this one, is this is the way that uh, guitars should really be made. This one is a little bit different. It sounds different, it looks different, it feels different, it's priced different. It is different. You can see straight from the case that it's not your ordinary PRS. And, uh, you know, some of the artist packs have a very similar case, but not the same. What gives these away is this handle down here. This is different than the artist pack handles. And uh, I've only ever seen this handle on two guitars that you can be lucky enough to get to near that is. Uh, and, and there's one of those handles, it's like a soft wrap around thing, it's, it's not the hard thing that you can pick up. But enough about the handle, let's open it up and just take a first look inside at what we've got. Wow! <laughs> Every time you lift the lid on something like this, uh, you realise just how good it is. And you know, looking at things usually from videos, well, try and find a video. Looking at things like this, uh, whether they're in the magazines, the PRS book I have over there, or what have you, uh, they don't really get across exactly what it's like. But I'm setting out in this video to show you what a Dragon 2002 is really like. Not what you think it's like, not what somebody's told you it's like, but you're going to go through this guitar from front to back. I'm not going to strip it down, no. It's been played, but only for about an hour since 2002. I'm going to take you through the guitar and show you what a PRS should really be all about today. I guess they do make them similar to this today, if you've got enough money. But like this one, when this one came out, it had a list price of $30,000. And I'll tell you now, that'll be £30,000 when it reaches the UK. That's an awesome... Well, I say it's an awesome price. It's not an awesome price. What it is, it's an obscene price, if you want the truth. Because, uh, well, we'll come back to that later. Let's take a closer look at the guitar. Well, it's there on the bench and we're going to zoom the camera in and take a look at the whole thing. The head, the tail. Actually, we're only going to look at the head. But we're going to look at the whole damn thing at the head. <laughs> Which is really, honestly, if you were here, you'd appreciate it. But I just want to thank uh, a guy named Steve. You know who you are. And you know why, don't you, Steve? And... Uh, Best of luck to you, man, and uh, that brand of guitars you've got, uh, I should really rock it. Uh, I might even include a bit at the end of the video about that, but we'll come back and see you later. Let's go and take a look at the Dragon 2002, and uh, what we've actually got. Well, there it is, all in its glory, and uh, I can tell you, if ever there's a dragon that uh, deserved being uh, seen as uh, nasty, there it is. It's still got even got blood on its teeth. Look at that. Uh, this one actually consists of a sort of smoky grey background. They vary in colour. There's I've seen a red one and a blue one, and there's smoky grey. I think there was only the three colours actually. Uh, they're the only ones I've ever seen. But uh, this one's a smoky grey one, and uh, for those who want to know about the number and things and the series and the rest of it, uh, this one's actually number six. Uh, out of a hundred, uh, they made a hundred plus a few prototypes. Prototypes are kicking around. You'll see them uh, as I speak in June 2012. There's a prototype on the internet for 30,000 euros, which is about, I guess, 27,000 pounds. Or if we were to convert it from pounds, we're near 40,000 euro, uh, 40,000, sorry, 40,000 uh, US dollars, which is an obscene price. It's just not worth the money. Bear in mind that prototypes usually are not as good as the final beast. Uh, they've been messed around with a bit and, you know, things aren't always right. Anyway, there's the dragon. There's his, there's his eye. There's some of the bits about him. Let's, let's run around uh, what's on this, uh, what it comprises of. Not exactly, I'm just going to talk generally. but It's all good stuff. Uh, because you don't see these. You just really never see one in real life. Okay. Well, what have we got? What have we actually got? Well, you know, to me, 
Uh, as far as this thing's concerned, first things first, I'm going to get this out of the way because it always bugs me about PRS and this shape. I don't care what anybody says, not PRS, not the fans, not the, 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 the man with the, 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 the wig on in the courts. The, uh, come on, you're entitled to your own opinion. I'm telling you now, that's a Les Paul. <laughs> there, I've said it. I don't care if you disagree, you agree, it doesn't matter. That's my opinion. That's a Les Paul. And I'll tell you something else. It even sounds like one, but uh, with a slightly different uh, voicing because of these pickups. So we got this, uh, this fixed bridge, uh, funny enough, just like a Les Paul, or some, <laughs> very similar to the early ones. We've got the four knobs, uh, which are two volumes and two tones. You've got the usual... Gibson Les Paul switch in the same place. You got everything in the right places. These are in the same place as Gibson's give or take. You know, it's a Les Paul. Well, what makes it different? Well, first of all, you've got this dragon. And the dragon comprises of hundreds and hundreds of pieces of abalone, uh, rare stone, all sorts of things. Uh, even uh, mammoth tusk, they say. I think they put it in some lists. And uh, so what you could really say is that's, uh, that's um, a dinosaur teeth, or at least shavings of them. Yeah, you can see uh, where some of the money's gone. Well, actually, you can see where a lot of the money's gone. Uh, that's an amazing uh, figure. If you look at it, it's got some of the highest quality abalone and, you know, those other sort of shells and materials that you can get. I mean, it's, it's just, honestly, close up. It is awesome. This one's a bit dirty, but it wasn't very dirty, really, compared to it being 2002, and it had only been played for an hour, so I wasn't really too worried about that. And the fact is, there aren't any scratches on this guitar, it's just like the factory. Uh, there were a couple of paint things when I got it, but I cleaned them up with, uh, actually, that polish that no, <laughs> that they said, don't use it on an expensive guitar, I used that one on this. And uh, I used the uh, number one on the back. And uh, I used number two on the back a little bit. Then that blue stuff, you know, that I showed you in the other video. And I just used number one on the top very, very lightly. And then the blue stuff and cleaned it all up and it, it came out great. The pickups uh, are dragon pickups. Uh, I investigated, not dragon two pickups, they're just dragon pickups. And it's a funny thing, if you play this guitar uh, through the uh, Road King, as I have, and get the, the sort of distortions just right, honestly, you could play just an open E, and it, it growls like a dragon. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a uh, a video of uh, you know I'll play something, and uh, you can have a listen yourself. And to me, it has an absolutely unique tone that I don't think you're easily gonna pick up just in any old place. Uh, it is an awesome tone. But let's move it on a little bit further. You can see that the dragon's nose it even goes all the way down the uh, down the fretboard, which by the way, this fretboard. That's Brazilian rosewood, but we're going to come to that in a second or two, so I just wanted to talk generally about this top. Let's go and have a look at the neck and uh, the headstock and uh, see what we find out down there with it. We'll come back and have a few close-ups, by the way, of these eyes and all the rest of it with the camera. A bit later. Now, interestingly enough, if you, uh, if you look at the rest of the neck, it's, uh, it's good old plain Jane. <laughs> You've got the, the little dots on the top made of, let's have a look what they are made of they look to me like uh, abalone dots or something like that they are you know, those little sort of nondescript dots down the top but apart from that uh, it's just completely blank uh, I think that's a little bit boring, they maybe should have done something with that but there you go, that's what you've got they haven't, they're not going to change it, the hundred have been made there aren't going to be any more, that's that so there's the uh, neck of the dragon that's a funny word to say. <laughs> but anyway, it's very playable. It's Brazilian rosewood. It feels great and it sounds even greater. Uh, this one, like you can see, is absolutely pristine and mint. Let's move down to the headstock because the headstock just gets better and better. Well, here it is. The uh, Dragon 2002 plate, which is made of uh, Brazilian rosewood. Fancy that. You've got the face of the uh, Dragon 2002. It's got its abalone or something very similar to it 
embedded in there a bit like on you know the other dragon that we looked at that was gold but this one is this material and uh, it's got the series two things like most of the PRS's today I guess uh, unless they've moved on a little bit but I don't look that close to the new ones cost too much <laughs> How can I say that when I've got this? But don't worry, <laughs> you know what I mean. You've got a uh, very nice uh, gold finish on here. Funny you've got that there, it's like a gold nut on a sort of chrome bezel. How weird. I'd expect it to all be gold, and these indeed. But maybe it's not that high a quality of guitar, I don't know. Or maybe Paul Reed Smith just wanted to save a bit of money, who knows. Let's move on to the back of the headstock. Here we are, you just know it's serious stuff, don't you? Dragon 2002, number 6. But what's all this crap? Look, they did half a job. They chromed it. And they gilded it. Well, I suppose they just got these done and maybe they had some over. <laughs> so they put gold screws on. They put gold tips on. But they put the regular run-of-the-mill, you know, $1,500 PRS tuners on. Nice. Well, I suppose that's one way of doing things. I would have expected to see the real deal on there. Uh... You know, thirty thousand dollars. I expect it to be real gold, personally, but I'm just glad I didn't pay that sort of money. There you go. Now, one thing that is interesting about this, uh, the whole neck, but in particular the headstock. Look carefully, and you can see, like, there's a line across here. Can you see that? All the way across. And it's almost like, well, it is like that they've taken a piece of wood and they've glued it on the end of this other piece that goes all the way down the neck. Okay, I can see it from here, you can't see it all from there, but don't worry. And they, they, they fiddled it out a bit here too with a darker piece, can you see that? So it's a barge, actually it's probably not a barge, that's, that's probably what they had to do because they probably couldn't get a piece of Brazilian rosewood this long. They can only get it that long, you know, by the time it's gone in the body and all the rest, that's what you get, and that's what you're going to get, and uh, hey, we'll patch it accordingly. Now. The thing is, this Dragon number 6 isn't alone. They did that on all of them. Even on the prototypes. Even on the real deals, the other ones that I've seen. They did this. This is, this is, they must have bought a batch of Brazilian rosewood that was used for the neck, because the whole neck's Brazilian rosewood. Now that's not that unusual from PRS. Uh, they did go through a run of, you know, Brazilian necks where it's solid Brazilian like this one. But uh, it's a little bit unusual, I think, where you've seen it patched like that. But there again, I haven't seen some of the other guitars, uh, the more modern ones, or the newer ones, with Brazilian on, uh, at the back of the headstock. So maybe, they, maybe they're maybe full, maybe they... I don't know. Who knows? But that's just an interesting pastime. And there's the number two for this model. 2002. Because it's a 2002 Dragon. Let's have a look at the back of the neck, and uh, we'll continue down, and we'll get back to the front. Well, what have we here? Well, what we've got here is a really fantastic piece of Brazilian rosewood. Now, if the truth's known, and Paul Reed Smith didn't do what Gibson were accused of, who knows, this is supposed to be 40-year-old Brazilian rosewood. That's the theory, isn't it? Something like that, at least. At least it isn't last year's Brazilian rosewood, is it? <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be illegal. Hey, I wonder if they ever raided Paul Reed Smith's place. I don't know. But there you go. I'm sure Paul will tell you if you ask him nice. Maybe he won't. Who knows? It's not good publicity, is it? And uh, it wasn't good publicity for Gibson either, I don't think. But there you go. So, there's the Brazilian. Uh, it, they always have... If you zoom in a bit. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see the condition of the... Uh, Brazilian on it, I'm not sure you can. Yeah, you can. Can you see that there's lots of little holes in the Brazilian rosewood? It's like grain. And uh, somebody said, ah, oh, you rub it and rub it and rub it, you'll fill them in and you know, all that stuff. But really, I don't really want to do that on this one. And I guess you can imagine why, really. <laughs> so that's some of the neck. It's really smooth, actually. Uh, like these Brazilian necks are. I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome piece of neck. Let's move on to the joint. No, not that one, you fool. <laughs> well, there's no getting away from it, is there? This is one area where uh, PRS didn't actually copy Gibson. <laughs> Sorry, where PS, PRS didn't simulate Gibson.
copy? Who said copy? I didn't mean that. But there you go. You can see that this neck joint is very different than OS Paul. Of course, from the front, you wouldn't know. <laughs> but from the back, I guess if you were buying guitars, looking at the back of guitars, you'd never confuse this with a Gibson Les Paul, would you? Well, no, you wouldn't. Even if the back plate and the rest of it looked the same, no, you wouldn't confuse it because this neck joint is different and the top of the neck, you know, uh, is different too, isn't it? So, very nice. Why don't you get up the top? I keep knocking the camera with my hat, but don't worry. It's just a big hat on a, I don't know. What do you mean, big head? Stop it. <laughs> Let's look at the back. And what I sort of did is move back a little bit because uh, we had my lights off the ceiling shining very nicely in the middle of the body, which isn't what anybody wants to see. But if you look at this body, it's all very nice. A few bits of dust where I've been cleaning it down, things like that. But it's just a regular black finish. Reminds me of my 1991 PRS. Uh, regular black, as, you know, you can have any colour you want as long as it's black. Uh, that's what they say, isn't it? And uh, you've got the plates. Something very Gibson-esque, aren't they? And as for this one, well, <laughs> you go figure. <laughs> But there's not a lot to say about the back. Uh, down here you've got the uh, guitar connector, which is on a metal plate, whereas uh, some of the other very similar guitars tend to be on a plastic plate, don't they? Uh, and what else have you got around here? Well, not a lot. So we're going to go back to the front, and we're going to have some real good looks at that front of that guitar, which is what we all came for, isn't it? Well, here we are back again. Uh, one of the things I'm going to harp on about, as I always, always do on PRS, is you know they have this... this uh, I won't call it binding, because it isn't binding. What it is, it's a way of making it look like there's binding on there, basically at zero cost on the manufacturer. That's one way of doing things. And, you know, if nothing else, uh, well, I wouldn't say if nothing else, but Paul Reed Smith did come up with quite a very clever idea that no one else had actually come up with. Uh, how to make a binding on a guitar without making a binding. Just mask it off, fill everything in, Peel your masking off. Hey presto. But you know, on some of those other PRSs that we've looked at, in particular the 2005, which was just three years after this one, uh, some of this around the edge has run, or it had run, from the factory into this simulated binding, and it worked a right pig's ear. Or shall we say hog's ear for the Americans. <laughs> In England, we call it a pig's ear. It's the same thing, don't worry. But, you know, apart from that, uh, if you look at this one, this one's actually not bad. Although, just looking a bit close, I wouldn't say it's 100% perfect. It really close down there. Uh, I might just zoom into it. Just hang on a minute. Okay, now this is as close as I can get, and when I put my hand there, you might lose the uh, focusing or something, but if you actually look just there, you can see that it's not actually level. It sort of hops out a bit and then sort of hops back in a bit. Well, you know, it's a guitar with many features on it, and uh, the top is one of the most important features on this guitar. Uh, and you can see, in my opinion, just how hard it is to actually achieve a perfect result. In fact, I think probably on this guitar it's nigh on impossible. Now just before we go up really close, uh, I want to talk about how they put this on here. Basically they machine the, uh, the dragon and they machine the body so that it sort of can fit on there and then they put it on there and they put a plastic bag over the guitar and when they put the plastic bag over the guitar, they have the, the sort of glue on, ready for rock and roll. And then they vacuum all of the air out of this bag. And what the bag does is push it, push this, uh, this dragon's head onto the surface. Because this surface is actually, well, very much like a Les Paul, I hate to say it, but it is. And, you know, you've got a contour. And that's very difficult to go sticking this thing on here in any other way. So that's what they devised to make this uh, finish, this pattern, this head, fit on the uh, Dragon 2002 in this way. And like I say, it's, it's an amazing job. When you look at it close up in real life, it is awesome. I'm going to put some other lights on, see if I can get this a bit brighter without uh, actually getting too many reflections. Hold on. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Not much better, but you see a bit more of it. 
Uh, let me zoom in a bit closer and uh, take a look yourself at some of these uh, some of these sections of this guitar. Hold on. Well, hey, now we're beginning to talk uh, quality. If you look at this thing, the finish on this 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 top. It's just awesome how they've done it. They, you can see what they've done when you get real close up. You, you know, they've even been engraving different parts to get different tones. Uh, those teeth are dinosaur teeth. Actually, uh, I said mammoth. Uh, I think they actually use the word mastodon. Whether it's a mammoth, another name for a mammoth, I don't know, but uh, mastodon. And, and when we get to look at the teeth in a minute, you can see where some of it's all been engraved. Uh, I can't quite show. I'm going to slide the guitar down a little bit to those horns there. And if you look really careful there, let me zoom in a bit. Get the camera across a bit. Oh, not easy. Is it going to focus up? No, I have to drop back to about there. But you can see it's sort of sort of tone on it. No, not me. A tone. And it looks to me like it's been very finely engraved. And then they brought some bit of colour in it or something uh, on those things. So quite an amazing bit of work that is. The eye is well, it's just awesome, isn't it? Can I go in closer? No, can't go any closer than that. So let's come back out a bit. What you can see even with the eye, yeah, it's absolutely a lizard type eye. It's just so real. It's so uh, you know livid, really. Let's have a look at the teeth. Hang on. Now honestly, to me, I'm standing here, I'm not looking at it on a flat picture like you are, but I'm just looking through the lens and the, uh, the little screen on the camera here. And I swear them teeth are standing off. They, they're standing off the body. In real life, these things are hanging over the edge of the body. It's, it's an awesome uh, thing to see. These here actually look as if they're raised. Uh, and these here, actually up off the body. Uh, you probably got a, an idea of that yourself. Uh, it's really a bit strange uh, on a, a sort of flat sort of uh, uh, display or, well, dragon's head. <laughs> I can't say that. But that's a great thing. It, it really brings the guitar to life. And I have to say, if you, if you back from it a little bit, actually the whole head seems to be sort of raised a bit and I do know that one of the things that they were striving to do or so a read they were striving to do uh, was to actually have a 3D type of head where it stood off the body and I can tell you now that stands off the body like uh, nothing I've ever seen on a on a guitar it's just an amazing uh, feature look at it ouch oh, <laughs> that got me oh. let's have a look at somewhere else now here's another section of the teeth. This is where you come to the end of the mouth. And that's the end of the mouth with all the sort of board and guts. Or has he got lipstick on? <laughs> Maybe he has, but again, these sort of things here, if you can see these here, they, they, they look a bit flat, I guess, on the camera. No, they're not that flat. Uh, look at this one here, it's sticking out. It's sort of pointing out this way a little bit, like, like sort of that. Uh, that's amazing. And... Uh, how they've done all this, just, it's just quirky and strange, but whoever did it, and by the way, it wasn't PRS that did this, this was the third party company that do all the inlay. Uh, whoever that guy is, that is an awesome piece of work, and uh, it's inlay work like the likes of I've never seen before. I've seen a load of different things, not just guitars, but you know some of the other stuff where they do inlay work. and. I haven't seen anything better than this. This is really something. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to buy this guitar. It wasn't a million years ago I bought this guitar, uh, but I don't regret buying it. Uh, I paid a very good price for it, really. Uh, so the sort of figures that we're banding around in this video is not what I paid. But in the same context, it's more than what most ordinary guys would ever spend on a guitar. So, you know, it's horses for courses. but. As you come to it and you look at it, you can see why it cost the money in the first place. Although 30,000 US dollars is a list price, it's absolutely taking the mickey. Let's say mickey, eh? You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm sure you do, guys. What I play, I do play. And at the end of the video, uh, just before we move on a bit further, I'm still going to 
tell you at the end of the video we're still going to uh, play this uh, or maybe not on the end of the video maybe I'll do another video uh, where you get to see this play because the sound really is very different than a, a regular PRS I, I was most surprised let's look at some other part of it okay we're looking at the middle between the pickups and even here you can see those teeth it's almost like those teeth are sticking up out above this this back piece that's down in between the pickups it's, it's, it's quite amazing Oh, I played it. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Uh, another thing I, I thought strange about this, just while we're talking about this area of the guitar, that you've got these sort of chrome covers. Again, chrome, not gold, on both of them. You've got the gold screws and chrome covers. Very nice, but not. <laughs> and, and the same at the back here, where you can just about see this here. I've got a nice gold bar, and I've got... A nice chrome screw to go with it. Oh, what are they playing at? I don't know. That's just uh, the mentality, I guess. Uh, but looking at it, what a beautiful guitar. Zoom out again. Okay, here's another another view of it uh, zoomed out. Uh, I'll switch the main lights on and let's see if it makes any difference. But if you see some lights, I'll be turning them back. Probably will. Let's have a look. Well, it's not too bad. They're well hidden between uh, about there somewhere. <laughs> Well, that, uh, that view there sort of brightens up the, uh, the image for the video. Uh, it's about uh, 9 o'clock at night here, I'm recording this. and uh, You know, you can see that uh, the dark was setting in, so I flashed the lights on. You're going to get some reflections, but really, uh, you'll still get the, the gist of it. Even those teeth, even now, look, they're sort of standing up. This one here is right, it's, it's almost off the board. Uh, yeah, you get a different concept of the guitar, depending on what views you're looking at, and in what light, and from what angle. But it really is, it's, it's an amazing guitar, and uh, I, I really wanted to show everybody, because you guys, you never get to see them. Uh, you don't have any friends that have got them, probably, I don't know. Yeah, there's loads of guitars around, but there isn't loads of these around. Uh, there's, not, there's not loads of any of the PRS Dragons around, unless you get the brand new one, and then there's millions of them, I guess, but who knows. Uh, policies change within PRS and uh, you know issues change and all sorts of things uh, price changes too uh, so they have it the 2002 uh, Dragon limited to 100 this is number six well I'm back <laughs> I'll say it again as you knew I would be uh, with a guitar like this I mean you, you just honestly man you've got to be sitting here looking at this thing close up I've put the lights on now you might see a few reflections, don't worry about that. But honestly, when you're really looking at this, these teeth ah, are so sharp. And they, they, they sort of stick off the board. And I, I can't, I've never really got over that since I first saw this guitar. Those teeth, ouch, there's another one. And that evil eye. Now, the only other evil eye I've got as bad as this one, it's on the wife. <laughs> Yeah, she's got an eye like that. Actually, she's got two of them. Uh, sort of reptilian type of thing. You know what I mean, don't you? You know, Reminds me of that, that song I heard all them years ago. You know, American woman. But the scary part is she's English. <laughs> she must be worse. <laughs> Mark II. Oh. There's the guitar. You know, it's uh, fantastic uh, glory. Would I pay $30,000? Would have paid 30,000 euros for a prototype that's probably not as good as this? Because nah. it says proto on the back. I can get a bit of gold out myself, can't I? <laughs> because in most other ways it's probably exactly the same as this one, except somebody decided to sell a few for a little bit of extra money. That's how people are, isn't it, on the internet? <laughs> it's how they are at PRS as well, funny enough, I think. But there it is, and uh, any questions? Well, don't ask me. PRS doesn't really say much uh, about this instrument. Oh, there's one last thing I can do. Uh, let me get the tag out and I'll show you the tag because uh, that's an interesting thing. You've probably never seen one of the tags on one of these. Uh, hang on a minute. And here we are. I've got it. Here's the tag. Well, you probably can't see too much from there, but uh, serial number. Fair enough. Dragon 2002. 
assembled by EMG, I thought they were pickups. How are you doing EMG? He's quieter than the rest. And <laughs> final check by RH. Hi RH. Good job. Wide fat neck. It is. I can vouch for that. It's very different than that 1991 PRS I've got, which is a wide thin neck. You can feel the difference. It's more like a Les Paul neck. It is a Les Paul neck. Let's cut the crap. Special order number six. That's what it says there. Number six. And it says number six on the back. Actually, those pickups, they're not Dragon pickups. I was lying earlier on. See, that's how new it is. Well, it is to me. The PRS 7s. And oh, what are them? Well, honestly, your guess is as good as mine. PRS 7 and PRS 7. I've been scouring the internet to find out a lot of information about this model and this guitar. And to be honest, it's not there. There's not a single review at all like this. I can't find one being played anywhere, and I mean anywhere, on the internet. Not YouTube, not privately, not... I found one for sale for 30,000 euros from some guy, I don't know, some dude in Europe who wants his head looking. Uh, he's never going to sell it for that, no matter what you say. And uh, I found this one and uh, another one. And, and that was about it on the whole of the internet. You know how big that place is. It's actually bigger than uh, than where you live. <laughs> so it was set up with nines. I cleaned it down. I did all the stuff. I admit I put a new set of strings on, and the, I've got the packet down there. You've got the, the eagle thing on this one. See that? It's not close. And you've got the Paul Reed Smith 380 log Canyon Circle. All that rubbish on the back. Cust serve at PRS guitars, I'm sure they'd want to listen to you. For more information about the care of your instrument or check our details, please visit our site. Get out of here. Get that stuff that I was talking about the other day on that other guitar. I think we did it on the uh, I think we did it on the PRS uh, 1991, if I remember right. I could be wrong, it could be the other one that 2005. In either case, we did it, it worked. I put it on this, I did it, it worked, didn't damage it, don't put it on expensive guitars, he said. I did. Works perfect. Well, guess what? I guess if you've got one of them vintage things that's been kicked around the, uh, the fender yard <laughs> and then sold to you, uh, maybe you don't want it polished up. I don't know. Everybody to their own thing. That's me. One last thing. I've got this card here uh, from somebody named Steve Marlowe. Uh, very useful guy, actually. He, he makes guitars. He's got a generic card here. I've got some of these just the same. They're really cheap, but <laughs> don't worry, they look good. That's why I had them too. Uh, but he's named Tao Guitars, TAO Guitars, and he's, uh, he's on info at TAO Guitars Co UK, and he's www.tao Guitars Co UK. Oh, he can put his uh, number on 07903 588077. If you want to find a guy who's got some really nice guitars, he ain't got this one. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. But he's got some really great guitars, because uh, I've seen them, and uh, they look good. I didn't play them, but they do look good, and uh, he's got some great ideas from him. So maybe you want to go and check his website. Listen, it's not paid for, it's not advertising from him or anything like that. It's just that it's a guy I trust. Um, when I'm in the guitar world with guys I trust, I get a lot of people that I end up not trusting. Steve here is a guy I trust. If I trust him, you probably would too. Do you trust me? Well, maybe not. Well, if you don't trust me, go away. Go and watch somebody else <laughs> working for some dealer somewhere. Uh, them are the guys who will give you the review. Working for a dealer. Great job. Yeah, They do a great job of selling, that is. I'm not selling, am I? I'm just telling you that he's got some great guitars. So that's Steve. That's Tao Guitars. Go and check him out. This one, I hope you've really enjoyed this. I'm going to do another video. I've decided as I've been recording this. I'm going to do another video showing you this guitar in action. I'm not the greatest uh, gunslinger in the West. It doesn't matter. It's the tones you should listen to. Uh, I tend to play rock, so it's usually a bit heavier than normal. But maybe I'll just do a few nice light bits of work on the guitar, on the clean guitar. It's a fantastic sounding guitar. I've never heard pickups that sound like these. And fancy me calling up something they're not. Once more, the PRS 7 pickups. I don't even know what that means, but that's what they are. Hope you've enjoyed it. I really wanted to bring this to you guys. 
uh, to let you all see you know, the, the, what this guitar is about and what it's really like to spend a lot of money on the guitar and see and appreciate that guitar. That's what this video is about. It's almost like a training video, should you ever get enough money to buy one. It's got to help you guys. And if it doesn't help you, if, if you're never going to have enough money or you wouldn't buy one, well, you've seen one. And you've seen one as close as me. That's great. Don't forget, check out the website, www.tonymackenzie.com, because I'm going to do a written review of this. Far more depth. I'll have to pick up sound all that rubbish. Pictures of the back and all that stuff. One of these days. Uh, and you already know my channel, youtube.com, tonymackenzie.com, no dot. And you'll get the 58 or 60 videos that I've done that are online as of now, but they're coming online all the time. By the way, one of the next uh, videos I'm going to be doing is that uh, JBM410H JS, uh, that's the Joe Satriani model of that head from Marshall. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because I've had two of them JBM410Hs JBM in the past and they weren't very good. Honestly, they, they sounded they were bad, they were trouble once you got into those high distortion channels. Uh, looks like Joe's been playing these for 18 months or so and he's uh, said do this, do that, do the other, listen, stop it doing that and hey, wake up, come here, <laughs> get this done. So now you've ended up with an amp uh, that should really be a, a top of the line Marshall amp, whereas before it was a top of the line Marshall amp that wasn't. Uh, let's hope it's done a good job. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, Looking at the uh, PRS Dragon 2002 from TonyMcKenzie.com. See you again.